right, good morning, everybody. Welcome to church this morning. Let's get started with a word of prayer. <clears throat> Dear Holy Father, thank you for this day, Lord. Lord, thank you for everyone that's here, Lord. Lord, we ask that you bless this service and the service to follow, Lord. Lord, just be with us today as we read your word and help us to absorb it and live our daily lives as, as you have guided us to do, Lord. And just be with us today as the service goes on, Lord. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> All right. As I was talking about last week, we've been discussing uh, Christ as being a human. We discussed one week of Christ being a prophet, one week of him being a, a, a preacher. And last week and this week, we're still going to continue our discussion with Christ being around since the beginning of time. Uh, as we talked about last week, Christ was with God when, when the universe was created. Um, Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that, he may, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. <clears throat> so there's two words in there that tell us that Christ was with him. Uh, let us make man in our image, uh, in our likeness. So that's what he was talking about. Uh, so Jesus Christ knows everything that happened to man since the since Adam was first created. Uh, he knows what was here before the, the universe was created. There was nothingness. There was darkness. And Jesus Christ and God created the light. Uh, they created everything that we know of. Um, and as we discussed last week, the universe had a beginning and it will have an ending. And for those of us who believe, we will not be involved in the ending. We will be here, let's say, for the after party. Uh, when this universe is gone, we will still be here. Um, and that's all by the glory of God. Uh, that's why he sent Jesus Christ to earth. Um, they both created all the heavens and the earths. I mean, every star you see, Christ had something to do with the creation of it. Uh, everything that we see now with the telescopes and the, that they've sent up in, in uh, satellites, I mean, the... the all the scientific terms, the nebulas and the gas giants and all that. <clears throat> when God created everything, he put his stamp on mankind. We were created in his image. Uh, we are all born with part of God being in us. It's up to us to take that step and follow him. God gave mankind the ability to rule over every creature on earth. Um, some people take that, take advantage of that, that, that we have the ability to, to control the, uh, the creatures that God created and they, they, uh, they abuse it. They, they, these people that go out and kill an animal just for one part of its body. Uh, you know, they'll kill an elephant just for its tusk. That's not why God gave us uh, the ability to rule over everything. He gave us the ability to rule over everything to take care of it for him. Uh, I think the, the thing that bothers me the most is to see somebody mistreat an animal that, that we know as a pet, a cat, a dog, a, a gerbil, a guinea pig, anything like that. Uh, they're not here for us to mistreat. They're here for us to take care of. Uh, my wife is a cat person. Um, I'm a dog person. Uh, I don't think you can find any better companion than a dog. Uh, they, they will love you no matter what. And it doesn't matter what kind of day you've had. God created those animals and put them here for us to take care of. And if you've had a hard, one of the worst days of your life, you come home to a dog that you treat right and that loves you, and that day just falls off your back. It's done and gone. Um, some of the animals take it too far. I asked my wife about my dog. Uh, if I leave the house, he does nothing but cries and barks the entire time I'm gone. So 
But he shows his appreciation when I get home. He definitely shows his appreciation. Uh, Genesis 126, as I said, it said, let, let us make mankind in our image. So there again, he's telling us, let us make mankind. And it's up to mankind to uphold that image. It's up to us to show God in ourselves each and every day. Uh, instead of tarnishing his image. John 1, verse 1 through 3. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. And we know as we read further into the New Testament, Christ was the Word made flesh. So what this verse is telling us is, in the beginning there was the Word, and the Word was with God. So it's referring to Christ being with God. Um, and it tells us again that all things were made by him. Uh, we all know about the, uh, the evolution theory. But uh, if, if you look around, it's hard to believe that it's hard to believe that humans were an accident. That we started off as what's the term they use? Pri primordial ooze, and we just crawled out of the mud one day, and here we are. If we did that, how come every creature has not done that? Uh, the the, the, uh, the uh, the cows that God created in the beginning, they're still cows. Um, any kind of animal you can think of they were, that were created, why didn't they evolve? God, you know, yes, we have come a long ways. We have, uh, our intelligence has grown. Uh, we've learned a lot. That's the only kind of evolution that we've went through. But that is given to us by God. That's why he made us in his image. That's why as part of him, in us, each and every one of us, it gives us the ability to think. Uh, it gives doctors the ability to learn. It gives science the ability to uh, uh, discover new uh, new medicines, uh, new technology. And there's no way that it started off from a microscopic creature in a mud pile. It's just, there's no way it can happen. Um, John chapter 1, verse 14, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. So that's telling us again that the word became flesh. We have seen his glory, the glory of one, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father, full of grace and truth. Over the years, like I was saying, uh, the creation of life. The only thing that can give and take life is God. God gave us all life. Uh, God knows when we're going to die. He knows how we're going to die. Um, scientists will tell you that they've created life by cloning. They have not created life by cloning. They have copied life. They didn't give that creature life that they cloned. They didn't give it to, the life was already in that cell that they took from another animal because God gave that life to that animal. And these scientists will tell you, yes, we have created life. No, you haven't. You have just copied it. The life was already there. Um, God holds the life of every living creature, be it man to the smallest living microscopic creature. God holds their life in his hands. And he decides when and where and how they're going to leave this earth. Um, I like to believe that, uh, I mean, we, I, it, it'd be hard to imagine that every animal that has ever gave his life for our food, uh, for uh, uh, clothing for people, leather jackets and all that, uh, <coughs> every animal that has ever been... Uh, attacked by a gazelle in the, in the desert. Uh, it's hard to believe that they will all be in heaven. But I'm going to keep a hope in my mind that our pets will be there. 
that that would be that would you know uh, not only when I'm gone from this world am I looking forward to seeing Christ in in right there but uh, I'm going to keep a hope in the back of my mind that when I get there my little gizmo is going to come run up to me and say I am so glad you're here that would be great that would be great yep Colossians 1 16 through 17 for in him all things were created things in heaven and on earth visible and invisible whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities all things have been created through him and for him he is before all living thing all things and in him all things hold together um, and they're referring to Jesus Christ here uh, all things of power. Our, our government has no power over us that has not been given to them by God. They might think they do. Uh, if God was not there and they did have all the power, we'd be in a world of hurt right now. But they don't have the power. Uh, they never will. Um, we do know in the Bible that we that the Christians will suffer will suffer persecution. Uh, you'll be spit at, you'll be laughed at, you'll be made fun of. It, it's you know, but that's all part of that's all part of, of being a Christian. It's going to test your faith. Keep your faith strong, no matter what comes our way. Um, <clears throat> I was talking to Lenny yesterday, and we got on that subject. And uh, you know, most of us in here, I don't think we're going to see much of that. I don't, I don't think we're going to be around for that. But what about my grandchildren's grandchildren? What kind of life are they going to have? It's, uh, it's, not, it's not fun to think of, of what they're going to be facing. You know, we're talking uh, 35, 40 years from now. What, what are they going to have to go through? What are they going to have to put up with? Hopefully this country will come back to God before that happens. Um, everything was created by God the Father and Jesus Christ not only the material things but the mind and the spirit all things that are seen and unseen <coughs> um, let's go on to John chapter 8 uh, 56 through 58 your father Abraham rejoiced at the thought of seeing my day. He saw it and was glad. You are not yet 50 years old, they said to him, and you have, and you have seen Abraham? Very truly, I tell you, Jesus answered, before Abraham was born, I am. So <clears throat> Christ was telling that Abraham rejoiced in seeing Christ. And Abraham was long before his birth. Um, but they questioned him about it. You're not even 50 years old. How could you have seen Abraham? Uh, when this book of the Bible was written, I don't know how long it had been since Abraham's death, but I'm sure it was probably several hundred years. And they were doubting him. But he told them, he answered, before Abraham was born, I am. And he, as he's saying, I am, he's, he's telling you that, yes, he, Christ was God. He was with God. He was there. He's seen everything from the creation to his birth. And he continues to see everything. He continues to have control over everything. Um, but a lot of the people during the time Christ walked the earth were, were not, they were just non believers. They refused to believe that he was the Messiah sent by God. Hebrews 1, chapter th uh, verse 3. The sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had pro provided purification of sins, he sat down on the right hand of the, ma of the majesty in heaven. <coughs> 
Christ was like the Father and one with him, along with the Holy Spirit. Uh, the Holy Trinity has been around since the beginning. It's, it's been there and always will be there. Um, everything that we know of, every, every person we know, every item that we can physically touch, no matter what it is, will not be here forever. But God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost will be here forever. And we have that opportunity to be there with them. All it takes is faith. Belief and faith. Christ died for each and every one of us. Not just us, but everybody that walks this earth. Um, and as I said last week, can you imagine knowing that you have to give your life for somebody who will never believe in you? That's what he done. He, he knows that there's people that will never believe in him. But he give us that opportunity, uh, the proof, and all it take, like I said, all it takes is to believe. Um, <clears throat> A lot of folks have told me, uh, one in particular, and I will not call that person by name, I will just refer to that person as my ex, um, have told me that they read the Bible and every word of it was a lie. And that if it was true, that Jesus Christ was a male chauvinist pig. Now, I don't know how that person got that out of the Bible. Well, I do know how. They read it without believing in it. Uh, they read it as a novel and didn't take a single word of it as truth. Well, if you don't have Christ in your life and you don't have the Holy Spirit to guide you, you're not going to understand the Bible. Even after you accept Christ, it's going to take time studying this Bible <coughs> to understand it, but you will understand it if you just take the time and read it. Christ is going to give you, the Holy Spirit's going to give you that power, the power of understanding of God's Word. Um, Revelations 1, verse 8. I am the Alpha, the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is coming, the Almighty. Uh, this is when he's talking to John in Revelations. He's telling us that he is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end of everything the beginning and the end of everything. Um, and he's going to return for us. He's going to return for us. Uh, and you know, for, the, for years, uh, people have always, uh, always wondered, is this the end, end of times? Is this the end of the world? We don't know. No matter what's going on, we, we cannot determine when it's going to be. We all know it's coming. And uh, we all have the faith and the belief that we will not go through the, the tribulation, which we all ought to be thankful for, very thankful for. If you read the book of Revelations, you don't want to go through the tribulation. You've got to keep your faith, keep your belief, and thank God for everything. Um, Revelations 21, verse 6. He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. He's referring to himself in that verse. Christ is referring to him the water, the, 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 the water of life. And that's what he gave us. Um, when we were discussing a couple weeks ago about Christ being a human, uh, even though he knew everything about mankind, because like I said, he'd been there since the beginning, he came to earth and showed us, he taught us a lot, taught us wonderful things, but he also lived the life of a human. Although he was never he was never injured, he was never harmed, he still lived the life of humans. He's seen firsthand uh, 
what humans go through, um, the pain and sorrow uh, that we go through, the happiness and the joy that we all experience, the love that we experience. Um, he's seen the good and the bad in humans, but he still decided and went through with sacrificing himself. John chapter 1 verse 4 in him was life and that life was the light of all mankind um, the light they're referring to is what Christ give us if we accept him uh, his light shines through us uh, we should live our daily lives with that light shining let people know that you're a Christian uh, you don't have to do it all the time by telling them Yes, I'm a Christian. You can do it by the way you live your life, the way you treat people, uh, the kindness that you, that you give to people. Um, some people are, will appreciate it. Some people will not. But we still need to show it. Um, if you live your life as Christ wants you to live your life, it's going to be seen by everybody. They're going to see it in you. They're going to see it by the way you act. Um, and our belief in Christ has gave us everlasting life. So, like I said from the beginning of time, he's been here. He's been with us. Um, and he's with us every second of the day. Uh, I guess when I was younger, you could, could have referred to me as an adrenaline junkie. Yeah, I never done nothing really crazy. I mean, I did some bungee swinging, but you know. Um, some of the careers that I chose, uh, law enforcement, um, driving a truck across country, that's a dangerous occupation. But I, I, as a truck driver, I've seen some of the most horrible accidents you can imagine. Um, but I was never involved in one. God was right there with me. He protected me all the way across. I mean, it's, I've traveled from coast to coast, I don't know, 10 or 15 times. Uh, there was a thing on Facebook the other day, and I was looking at it, and it was a list of every state in the United States and all their territories. And I got to counting, and I have, I have been to 38 of those locations. Um, I've drove a, I have not drove a truck uh, in the in, uh, not the Bahamas, but the the Caribbeans. But I have been to the Caribbeans. But other than that, 37 of those I've drove a truck through, and done it safely. So he was with me every step of the way. He's with each and every one of us every step of the way. Um, with the light of Christ comes the knowledge and understanding that we need to understand this Bible. Um. And like I said, as an unsaved person, this, this doesn't mean anything to you. Uh, I mean, I think you could read it 10 or 15 times and not get anything out of it. Because that understanding is not inside you. The Holy Spirit's not there showing you what it's all about. That's all I have for today. Thank you.